I'll recognize the, my good buddy from the state of Florida, Kat Cameron, for five minutes. Uh, yes, Steve Spurrier, land of Steve Spurrier, go Gators. Uh, thank you, and congratulations to my good friend, uh, Chairman Bill Arrakis, uh, for hosting this very important hearing today. Thank you to our witnesses. Uh, we're coming to the end, so, so hang in there with us. This topic, our competitive edge against an adversarial nation who uses the existing multilateral system to bend the rules in their favor, the Chinese Communist Party, is one of the most important issues of our time. Indeed, the CCP has very little regard for basic human rights, environmental protections, or the rule of law as they continue on their quest for global dominance. So I believe that the greatest value that we have as a nation is our people, our constitutional republic, and our CQ, our creative quotient. <clears throat> We are innovators. From the space race to the deployment of the internet, the United States has been an international leader on scientific innovation and achievement. Our free market model, paired with our national creative quotient, including private R&D efforts, no doubt drives much of our success as a leader in the world. So the work that we do here today will lead and carry us through the next several decades. Without question, the U.S. and our allies must lead the world in privacy regulations and technological innovation. Otherwise, we risk allowing malign actors like the CCP to create a counter set of rules predicated on debt-trapped economies that will be enticed to leave the rules-based system and adopt a model made, made to benefit authoritarian countries run by groups like the CCP. So jumping right in, Mr. Pugh, you said in your testimony, and my good friend from Tennessee alluded to this, you know, the protections and privacy laws are wholly inadequate, by and large. How do we balance that patchwork of state laws? How can we do a preemptive federal privacy and data security law that specifically uh, allows for those protections while prohi prohibiting the stifling of entrepreneurs or new market entrants into tech-related industries, quantum computing, social media, AI, et cetera? Uh, Congresswoman, thank you. And, and I think you, you really uh, answered the question uh, kind of yourself because uh, <laughs> preemption uh, is, is key. And I think ADPA was a great substantive step in terms of how preemption was, was solved. And that's exactly the, the thing. We, we need one federal standard, not this patchwork that is emerging. Granted, only five states will have privacy laws in 2023. We've already seen dozens and dozens introduced uh, this year and last year. So I think the real potential of having even more laws this year and next is is going to be there. And it's going to, it hurts our small and medium-sized companies because they don't largely have the resources to, to follow all the developments, the constant amendments at a state level, whereas if they have one standard to look to, it may still take resources, but at least it's one standard. So I think that is, that is the key, and making sure preemption is uh, strongly reflecting a federal bill. I appreciate that. And, and I'm going to follow up again on my, my good friend from Tennessee. We were sitting over here talking about TikTok. You know, I'm the millennial in the room, and so this is a, a generation grandmother, millennial, but you know, this is a, a concern to me, my peers and the generation coming directly right after me, the Gen Z's. I grew up with social media, MySpace, uh, Facebook, today Meta. Um, these have real world impacts, uh, privacy concerns. Heck, one social media uh, platform can be directly attributed to a political revolution in nations abroad. So we know that there are real world impacts that we have to contend with. So obviously TikTok being a huge one, uh, Representative Harshbarger alluded to the fact that in China on TikTok, children 14 and younger are, are shown patriotic videos, educational videos, um, history videos, and they're limited to 40 minutes. In the United States, they, they have the algorithms set to do shorter videos that are uh, meant to create dopamine hits in your brain. There was a survey done between the United States and China of 14 year olds asking what is the most aspirational career you want to have. In the United States, the number one answer was social media influencer. In China, they said they wanted to be an astronaut. If you want to look at the future of our two nations, start here. That is why we need to be very serious about how we contend with TikTok and other apps like TikTok. So my question, and I know I'm running short on time, is how can we protect our kids, our data, while simultaneously respecting free market economics in these applications? Um, the balance is a really tricky one, but we need to have a game plan moving forward on how we contend with this. And if any other witnesses want to answer this, I'm open to, to hearing your thoughts. 
let's in nine uh, seconds. Yeah, <laughs> very brief, and then we're going to take the the question for the records. It's a very important question, so I want to, I want you to have as much time to answer it. Uh, this is what we're facing in this country. Please briefly. The, the, the short answer, uh, uh, Congressman and, and Chairman, is passing a national comprehensive data and privacy and security law. We did a report last year with 125 different entities across all ideologies in conjunction with Harvard, and we, th we think that really is the answer of solving some of these national security and privacy concerns. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it.